Hi everybody, it's Brian here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. So a number of episodes ago, I introduced you to a new Canva alternative website called Pilotno Studio, which is absolutely free to use. And for many of you who are not in a position to be able to get the full subscription to Canva, you guys responded to me with a lot of thanks for this valuable resource. And I know that it has been helping many of you take your print on demand business to the next level by obviously being able to create some amazing designs with it. And for that, I'm really happy that you're putting it to good use. Now, some of you have come back to me and told me, listen, can you create a couple tutorials showing us how to use it? And hey, I'm here to serve, I'm here to help out. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can use the Polano Studio to create an amazing image text effect, which is really easy to do. And you can put this effect into so many different niches, irrespective of which ones you are designing for. So if you're excited about that, hey, do me a favor, click that like button in appreciation, and let's head over to my computer now to get started with this tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. And as you can see here, we have the Polotno canvas area opened up on my screen here. What I did was I opened up a canvas basically to Instagram post dimensions 1080 by 1080. You can actually open up any canvas size that you want simply by clicking on file and then choosing open and then obviously adjust the canvas size to fit your, your needs. So basically, if you wanted to do something for a t-shirt design, obviously as many of you know, the ideal dimensions is 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels. But for all intents and purposes, irrespective of what canvas size you open, this effect is going to work the same. Polotno is a wonderful free platform that you can use, very, very similar to Canva. Um, so if you don't have the paid version of Canva, or maybe you are not in position as yet to purchase the Canva uh, paid subscription, you can actually utilize Polotno. I, in fact, use both of them because I actually enjoy both platforms. But obviously, given the scope that this particular video is all about Polotno and how you can go about using the various different types of tools, rather this tool for your print-on-demand designs, we're going to be just focusing on this particular platform today. So how are we going to go about creating this image text effect um, for um, our print-on-demand designs? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to grab a photo. Now to grab a photo, you can actually click on photos and actually key in your search term, all right, and go through any and all of the photos that Polano has to offer. The bulk of it is free, so you can actually find a photo over there. Or if there isn't anything in the library, uh, rather in the photo library for Polano, you can utilize stock photo websites like Pixabay and Pexels. I already went ahead and found one from, um, I believe it was Pexels, but for all intents and purposes, it's a photo of a motorbike on a, uh, on a track. So I'm gonna just drag it in here, all right? Now, obviously, as you can see, this particular photo doesn't fill in the entire canvas. So what you can do is you can either click on fit to page, and as you can see, Polotno does that for you. But obviously, you know, the the, the rider is off uh, canvas. So what we're gonna do is we just click and we're gonna drag it and we're gonna open up the bar here so that obviously we can get more of him into the canvas. I'm not too worried about the back wheel, okay? Um, I want a little bit of space here on the front end so that obviously there's somewhere for the text to move into. Now, what we need to do is we're going to add in a piece of text here. So we're just gonna click on the text tool here and we're gonna choose create header. And what I wanna do is I want to get a nice, thick, bulky font. So we're just gonna click on the drop down arrow here. And we're gonna scroll down. And one of the fonts that I enjoy using, let's see if we can bring it up here, is Archivo Black. Again, you're welcome to choose whatever font that you want. It really doesn't matter. Choose one that you feel really complements the photo that you're going to be working on. Maybe there's a particular font that you like, go for that. The technique is effectively still the same. The only thing that I would caution is that if you have a very busy photo, as is in the case over here, um, don't use like a script type font or a, too, a font which is too thin because it really won't, the effect won't really come out. And um, you'll be spending a lot of time and at the end of it, it really won't look that good. So we wanna choose a nice thick font. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on the, the text here and we're gonna type in, in block letters, so I've got my caps lock on, keep, and then on the next line, writing. Okay, so it's a quotation, 
pertaining to people who are, you know, motorcycle enthusiasts. And now what I want to do is I want to increase the size. I want it to make it big and bold. I want it to effectively cover the bulk of the canvas size. So to do that, we're just going to click over here. You can actually key in the number or you can use your up and down arrows accordingly. Um, let's start with 230. Okay, so as you can see here now, it's already out of sync. It's out of whack here. So we're just going to click and we're going to drag the font up. And then I'm just going to grab the middle bar here and I'm just going to drag it out so that obviously the entire text fills in accordingly. Now there's a little bit too much space between keep and writing. Now to bring that closer, all you need to do is click on this icon over here. And when you do so, you've got your line height and your letter spacing. So what I want to do is I want to decrease the line height. Now you can actually go in, in increments of 50 or you can grab the toolbar here, the slider, and just drag it to the left. And as you can see, um, the, the, the words are coming closer. I don't want it too, too close. I'm actually quite happy with that. So I'm going to click outside, click on it again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down. And what I want is I want basically the portion of the P over here just to be coming out to the right of the helmet of the motorcyclist and part of the G here, the letter G to come out to the right of the, uh, the motorbike too as well. Now, how are we going to create this effect? Well, we need to do two more steps here. And they're very, very simple. The first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate the text and create a stroke with no color fill whatsoever. Now, if you were in Canva, you could actually go into effects and click on hollow. And obviously after you've duplicated the text, you would get a nice stroked uh, font, duplicate of your font of the text that you use. Um, in Palatno, you can't do that right now, but there is a way around that. There is a hack for that too as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that obviously keep writing is in fact um, toggled and we're going to click on the duplicate element here. So now we have a nice duplicate of that. It's a hodgepodge of text. Don't worry. We're just going to drag it down so that we can see what we're doing when we're moving. And what I want to do now is I want to go into effects. I'm going to click on effects and I'm going to turn on the text stroke. Now, the text stroke I want to make sure is white because my font is going to be white when all is said and done. Again, it could be any color that you want, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going with white. So I'm going to choose text and I'm going to go into the hex code here. And for those of you who may not know this, the hex code for pure white is six letter F. So I'm going to click on the F six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see now, I've got a white stroke around the bottom, keep writing. But I need to get rid of the fill in terms of the black. Now to do that, I'm going to click on the black color as you can see here at the top. Okay, I'm going to click on again. And just underneath the color bar over here, you're going to see a little handle, a gradient handle. And it's already obviously to pure black, which is on the far right. If I grab that handle and I drag it all the way to the left, as you can see, the fill color has disappeared. And now I have a stroked version, a stroked duplicate of my text keep writing. And now it's just simply a question of dragging it up. Okay. And obviously aligning it on top of the previous version of on top of the previous layer, excuse me. Okay. But we're still not done yet. We want to bring some of that motorcyclist in between the fill layer and the outline layer. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to remove the background behind the motorcyclist and utilize that removed background component and drag it into our canvas so that obviously we can put them in order so that we get that nice image text effect. Now, you can remove the background in Palatno if you want to. All you need to do is you can click on the photo. And as you can see here, our options have changed and we can see we have remove background. Now, um, remove background in Palatno will cost you credits. So if I click on it, it's going to tell you you have five credits to remove the background. Obviously, it's going to cost you a credit or two. I'm not really familiar with exactly how many credits it costs. Because to be frank, I don't utilize this aspect, but if you want to delve into it and try and, and experiment with that, you're more than welcome to. What I like to do is I like to use another platform called Remove BG, and I have it up here on the screen. I'm just going to click on the tab here. And as you can see, um, I've already removed the background from the motorcyclist, and it's super simple to do. All I have to do, let's go into the original. I drag the original into the canvas here on the platform. 
and automatically remove BG goes ahead and removes the background. And obviously I can click on remove background in order to see. If there's something that I didn't like about it, I could just click on the edit and make my fine edits before I actually download. So then when you're ready, when you're happy with the component that you've extrapolated, the background that you've removed, you just click on download, which I've already done, so I'm not going to do that. And then you go back into Polotno. So I'm gonna click on the tab that I have for Polotno. Okay, we're going to close this window here. Now, what I'm going to do is I have the removed background component of the motorcycle just off camera. I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to drag it into the canvas, as you can see here. And obviously, it's obviously a smaller size than the canvas that we have. But don't worry. I mean, what we need to do is just resize it so that obviously it will fit accordingly. And it's really not hard to do. You're just going to click and move your uh, this particular layer around. You're going to grab the handles. And you're going to start expanding until you get it to the desired size that you want. Okay, so I'm just going to work off the tires over here. And it doesn't look like I'm that far off. I think I managed to get it spot on over there. Let's just drag it a little bit more just to make sure. Yep. So I'm just going to drag it back down. Okay. And there we go. We now have obviously our removed motorcyclist on the top layer. Now, if you were working in Canva, this probably would be the part of your project that would probably be the most frustrating. Why? Because as many of you know, if you've used Canva, Canva doesn't give you the option to see your layers as you would be able to do in Photoshop, Photopea, Illustrator, or any of these other image editing programs, software packages that are out there. And what you'd have to do is you have to click and move each of the layer out of the way to be able to toggle the previous layer and you start moving the positions of the layers and it can get really, really frustrating and really cumbersome. Okay. With Palatno, they've actually thought about this and have actually given you or rather us the opportunity to see the layers. So all you need to do in order to see your layers is just click on the layers button. As you can see here, I'm going to click on that. And now all of a sudden we can see all of our layers one right after each other um, for this particular project. Okay. And basically you've got the image names, uh, the text names. Um, you can actually turn on and off the eye icons to see each layer individually. So if I wanted to just see the bottom one, I can just toggle off the other ones if I want to bring them back. I can do so just by turning the eye icons on. You can lock a particular layer. And if you don't need a layer anymore, you just click on the delete button. Now, you can also move the layers up and down simply by hovering your mouse pointer over these dots here. As you can see, my mouse pointer has turned into a cross. And all you need to do is just hover over the one that you want to move and just click and move it to the top. So as you can see here now, I've moved my stroke version of the text to the top and it's already starting to look really great. The one thing that I don't like at the moment, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is that I want the text for the solid color to obviously appear in white. Now to do that, I'm just going to click on that particular layer. I don't want to rename it. I want to make sure it's toggled. You can see that it's toggled because the color has now of that entire layer has turned blue. And then I'm just going to click on the color and I'm going to turn the color effectively to white. And again, as you know, the hex code for white is six letter Fs, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna click outside. And as you can see here now, I've got sort of this text image effect with the motorbike, obviously running in between the solid color and the outline. It's giving um, a different type of feel to the particular design. I could then download this particular project I can use it for my social media posts. I can upload it onto my Redbubble, TeePublic, Spreadshirt, Zazzle, or any of the other print-on-demand platforms that are out there, and obviously create some amazing designs and obviously target people who are enthusiasts of motorcycling, of motor racing, and maybe perhaps they would be interested in seeing this particular design on a t-shirt, on a mug, or any of the other products that are available out there obviously to purchase and obviously to help my shop increase in terms of revenue. So again, it really isn't that difficult at all to go about creating this text image effect. It's very free to do. Um, obviously, given the fact that you can see the various layers in your project makes things so much easier because you know that you don't have to stay moving around the components and then putting them back in, particularly if you're trying to align different aspects, different components of your design together. You can just go into the layers palette, click on the particular layer you want to modify, 
make those modifications and obviously you're good to go. So I really hope that you got a lot of value out of this particular tutorial. If you'd like to see more videos about how to use Palatno, particularly if you do not have the paid version of Canva, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to create some more tutorials to help you take your print on demand business to the next level, to create some amazing designs, not only for the here and now, but obviously for your entire business calendar year. And more importantly, for that all important fourth quarter when sales go through the roof, due to obviously the holiday seasons, people buying things for Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas and all of the other holidays that occurs during the fourth quarter. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please help me to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of this calendar year. Um, I'm really working hard to do that and I know that with your help, I can achieve that goal. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to do so. If you are interested in taking your print-on-demand business to the next level and learning how to generate more sales, please consider clicking on one of the two video thumbnails that have appeared on your screen now. I'll see you there. Thanks again.